At some point, the sound hurts his ears. Lupanda Nila's smithy is a small area behind his house. Here, he works with the simplest of tools and plenty of muscle power. The charcoal fire burns all day. The metal has to be heated to 1,000 degrees Celsius before work on it can continue. We moisten it with water so we can cut it more easily. When it's finished, it will have this shape. And that will make it easier to plow the land. When you look at this, you see that the ones we make are 8 millimeters thick. Imported parts are 2 millimeters thick at the most. And that's too thin for this hard ground. Now in October, after months without rain, you can't work with them. They bend and break too easily. Almost every morning, Lupande Nila goes out into the fields not far from his village. Right now, he has to plough to prepare his field for sowing. It's not an easy task for him or the other farmers in this area, not even if they work with tractors instead of oxen. The soil is hard as rock, desiccated after months of drought. He made his plough himself in his smithy. Nowadays, the other farmers buy their equipment from him. They were impressed by its quality. The dry season is expected to end soon. It's not just the other farmers in the village who are benefiting from Lupandinila's workshop. So are some of the young men who earn a bit of extra money here. Yeah. He hopes that one day his sons will carry on what he's built up, just as he learned everything from his grandfather. <laughs> About twice a month, the villagers receive a visit. Masanja Kalabo has been a regional agricultural commissioner for about 30 years. He gives the villagers tips on crop cultivation and new harvesting methods. Masanja Kalabo is very familiar with the needs of the farmers in the village, so Lupanda Nila's initiative impresses him. Lupanda Nila has hardly any money of his own available. He collects raw material himself, and often that's just scrap metal. And that's what he uses to make his tools. But only in very exceptional cases does he use the little money he does have to buy new material. Maswa, the district capital, an hour's drive from Senani. Lupanda Nila sells the products he makes here as well, via middlemen. And he's successful. His plough blades are not only more robust than industrially made ones, they're also cheaper. But Lupande Nila plans to go a step further. He says his dream is to make his own tractor one day, the first Tanzanian tractor. At this point, he has an engine lined up and a gearbox. He knows that's not all he needs, but says it would be feasible. The engine is a British model, an air-cooled Lister Petter. <laughs> Whatever it is, it has to be powerful, because that's what the farmers in this region need to plough the hard soil. One man here is said to know whether the longed-for rain will actually arrive, the village leader. Lupande Nila has come to him to find out more. And the leader has good news. There will be rain this year, lots of it, but only in certain areas, not everywhere. But here and there, it will certainly rain. In Tanzania, the rainy season is just around the corner. 
The young men in the village dance to welcome the new season, accompanied by young and old alike. Without abundant rainfall, the situation would be desperate. So Lupin de Nila hopes the leader is right, and that it'll be a good year for the harvest and the whole community. Ooh.